Good morning, I am Manuela Spagnoli, and today we are going to talk about Google API. As many of you are already aware, APIs are able to communicate with a lot of services. Before we talk about our example, it is important to spend some word about what an API is. API stands for Application Programming Interface, a set of specific procedures to perform a particular task. In our example, we're going to look at the process to upload a file from FileMaker to Google Drive. We need to do a lot of operation to achieve the goal, such as allow FileMaker to access Google account, retrieve all the needed information to authenticate, retrieve the token, then we'll figure out what is it, and finally, upload the file. In order to obtain the necessary information to use Google Drive's API, we need to navigate to the Google console and follow the wizard. Just click to accept the terms and condition, and we can create a new project. At the end of the wizard, we can navigate to the credential page and click on the button Create Credential. In order to create a new APIs and an OAuth client ID, for each client you want to be able to access the project. In our example, it's going to be just one client called test. All the authentication parameters can be downloaded from the download icon to get the JSON file. In this file, we're going to find more information than we need. Therefore, we are just going to use the client ID, the client secret, the auth URI, and the redirect URI. Then, let's move to the OAuth consent screen page to follow the wizard to create the project. Here, we can indicate the application name, the scope, the user, and at the end, we will appear a summary of our project and our information. The last step will consist of going to the APIs and Services page and to authorize the Google Drive API. At this point, let's open FileMaker, where we can set the fields with the information we just received and define the API's call to proceed with the process. The layout structure is developed in order to put in the highest part the field containing the information downloaded from the Google console, and the lowest part the information obtained as a result of the API call. On this layout, we can see the information used to allow the first authentication on Google, to access Google Drive via the API so we can get the outcode required for the next call. The fields set in this layout using the information coming from the downloaded JSON are the out redirect URI and the client ID. Once we fill out the fields, we can click on the button Authorize API. Let's open the script workspace to see what happened. In this script, we are going to set the variable authentication URL, where are stored all the relevant information to authorize the user. There are the endpoint, the authentication URL, the scope, the environment we want to use, the answer type, the redirect URI, and finally, the client ID got from the JSON. Running the script, in the web viewer, we will allow us to see the login page of Google and direct, directly access the wizard that authorizes the use of the Google Drive API. In the last page, Google will present us the outcode that we are going to copy and paste in the correct field. Let's go to the next step. Having got this far, we need the token. The token contains the security credential for a login session required to login on Google Drive. In this layout, the data used to complete the call definition are the out redirect URI and the client ID already filled, the secret key identified in the downloaded JSON, and the outcode obtained at the end of the previous call. 
Once all the fields are filled out, we can click the Get API Token button, whose result is going to be a JSON. Let's use the debugger to see what happened. The first variable we're going to set, and the only one, is the curl option, in which one we are storing all the information we need to send to Google to authorize us and to get the token. As a result of the insert from URL, we're going to have a JSON. And if we're going to parse the JSON, we're going to obtain the access token and we can store it and use it to upload the file on Google. We can obtain the refresh token. The refresh token is as important as the access token because the access token will expire after, after a specific amount of time indicated by the field expire in. Here you can see how many seconds the token is supposed to last. So with a simple FameMaker conversion, we can store the timestamp indicating when our token is going to expire. This way we can check if the token is still valid before calling the API. Let's go to the next step. As already described, after a period of time, the token expires. So it will be mandatory to get a new one to guarantee the access to the API services. At this point, the refresh token is the way to go because we can use it to obtain a new access token. The data in this layout we need to fill to complete the call information are the client ID, the secret key already filled, the API refresh token obtained at the end of the previous call, the API refresh grant type, that is refresh token, to identify the scope of the call. Now we can click on the get new token button to get the result in a JSON. Parsing the JSON, we can identify the new token that will be valid for a specific amount of time. Let's see what happened. Here we can see the JSON obtained as a result of the API call and parsing it, we can obtain the API refresh token with the new timestamp filled in the expired in. Let's go to the final step to upload the file. So here we are. This is the final step, the one that will allow us to upload the file on Google Drive. Because until now, we have just completed the procedure to have all the required authorization to all the services we want to use. The data in this layout we need to fill to complete the call definition are the API upload endpoint, the URL to point to upload the file, the API refresh token already obtained, and the file, the media we want to upload. Let's add a JPG file. Now we can click on the Upload File button to see what happened. FileMaker will show us a custom dialog to tell us that the file is successfully uploaded. We can see in our Google Drive the file appears and we will obtain as a result of the API call a JSON from which we can understand the scope, the place we uploaded the file, Google Drive, the ID, the unique identification number to get our file, Useful because it could be used to manipulate the file in next call or simply to download our file so we can store it and the MIME type, the kind of file uploaded. It is important to spend some word about MIME type because identifying the correct MIME type allows Google Drive to understand the file already received in the correct way. For example, if we're going to upload a Word file. Let's do it. Our file is uploaded. We will see it will appear on our Google Drive and double clicking on it. We will see a preview of our file and Google will give us the chance to use all the tool it has to modify the file. So we don't need to download the file. We can use all the tool Google have on it to manipulate and modify it. To make all the process easier, we suggest to build a custom function with all the MIME type of the file type you need to be uploaded. 
Now we can open the debugger to take a closer look on how the call is built to upload the file. Let's upload a new file, like a PDF. Let's open the debugger, click on the button and see what happens. The curl option will take care of all the required parameters are divided in two parts, header 1 and header 2, to make it easier. In the header 1, we're going to set the authentication token previously obtained. So let's move step by step to see in the data viewer our header 1 with the token. The header 2 variable, we're going to set the content type. It's going to indicate the kind of file we're going to upload, in this case, a PDF. Then we can join the two parts, the other one and the other two. And also we can add the real file we need to upload. So before we have it, we have stored in a variable file and then we can add it at the end of the curl option. So we will concatenate the two parts and add the real file. We will uh, insert from your, our option and we can see running the script, the custom dialog of FileMaker, the PDF file appears in our Google Drive, and we obtain as a result of the API call the ID to identify the files. Now we have already uploaded a JPG file, a PDF, a Word file. We can do as a last step of our process an upload of a PNG file. So let's do it. So we uploaded four different kinds of files into the Google Drive, but we can do more and more. These examples covers only a small part of the Google API's potential, but it's enough to prove that it can be used in a lot of different and more complex operations, such as creating folder, creating a subfolder, modifying the file name of the uploaded file, or to add a description, just to name a few. All these options give us the opportunity to successfully integrate Google Drive in very complex workflows. Thank you.